Ever wonder where confiscated trophy animals end up? Today, we're going to take you to the Region 2 Antler Auction. Later, we tag along with wardens on an enforcement adventure centered around one of Montana's most majestic animals, the bighorn sheep. Oh yeah, we'll meet a few reckless drivers along the way and mix it up on Flathead Lake for some holiday cheer. It all happens right now on Wardens. Today we're having a trophy auction. It's uh, confiscated, mainly confiscated animals, pretty much from the western half of Montana. It's about two and a half years worth from four regions. We're gonna sell it today to the highest bidder. Our evidence lockers are full. It's time to clean them out. I'm here just to see what uh, prices are going for on some of these items today. I like to pick up a few set of ram skulls with horns, maybe a elk rack or two, and just mount them up, maybe sell them, maybe keep them for my own. Did a real public uh, campaign here to let people know that this was going to be out in, uh, today. We put it in the newspaper, it was on the uh, website, it was on TV, on the radio. Wanted to get the word out so everybody would know. It looks like we got a good crowd. It's kind of like a garage sale. You say nine o'clock, they're here at seven. So we're getting an early crowd. So it's a pretty good indicator that we're gonna have a lot of folks here today bidding on the items. This auction is open to the public, which includes taxidermists, horn collectors, and even hunters trying to buy back their confiscated animals. Now, I used to be an outfitter and, and, or a guide and, yeah. and never kept anything back when I used to hunt and, and guide hunt. So I'm going to put together kind of a collection. We've got elk, whitetails, muleys, bison, rams, antelope, lion, you name it, pretty much it's here. I don't think there are any wolves um, or grizzly, but other than that, if, if Montana has it, it's here. The funds all go back into the state fund, um, anything generated from today. But man, there are some gorgeous skulls here. I'm looking at these two nice white tails that come in a two pack. Who knew? And uh, the beautiful elk over there. I've got to get my hands on a ram skull because they're just super hard to find. This is the only state that if you find them, you can't keep them. So there's a lot of goodies here that I'm hoping to get my hands on. We had a pneumonia outbreak. So, oh, yeah. you know, so some of them are just sheep that we had to put down because they were, you know, right. to keep it from spreading in the herd. Okay. So that's why there's so many sheep heads. Take an illegal animal in Montana, we will catch you. It may not be right away. We'll track you down and we will catch you and your animal will end up in this sale. $100 where? Put them at $100 even money there. Put them at $100 man. That's $50 where? 50, 50, put them at 50, put them at $25 now. 20 dollars there, 50 dollars there, 40 dollars now, 50 dollars sir, at 50 dollars even money there, 50 50, put them at 50, put them at 50 dollars now, 40 dollars over here, 50 dollars now, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, we have a lot of sheep heads here today, probably a, a world record number of sheep heads at the sale today, mainly because we had a pneumonia die off in several of our sheep districts last year. I thought it went too high, but it's all great. It goes back to the state fund, but I'm still waiting on the ram. They haven't gotten any of the ram skulls yet. Um, we've got about 100 of them here, so hopefully I can get my hands on at least one of them. We've got some shoulder mounts that we have behind me here. They were seen on search warrants. Uh, people took them illegally. Six and a half, now seven and a half, seven hundred dollars. Dave with a payment, six and a half, gonna be seven. Young lady, you want some of this too? Uh, number one dollars, six and a half, seven and a half, seven and a half, seven and a half, seven and a half, sold right this way somew
now. Don't want to miss anybody. Out uh, three and a quarter. Three are going to be quarter down. Put them at 25. Sold $300 right here. Your number. 255. 255. The buyer. The crowd whittles down as buyers load their new treasures, but there are still a few people who stay for the final item. Getting down to the end. She's about done. I'll go for it. Yep. Now we've got a new 15 and a quarter. Left, Either way. 25. Yes. 50. Now 75, man. Now 50. Now 75. I don't want to miss it yet. 50. 50. 50. 75. You want to miss it? 50. 75. You're out. All in and all done. Ladies and gentlemen, just sold it for $1,550. The buyer number 147. Thank you, we came here to do. Good job, I think you got, you got the best arm, too. And still, too. Coming up, Region 6 wardens take to the air over the Missouri River breaks in search of any illegal activities for the Bighorn Sheep opener. The Wardens is brought to you in part by Mahindra, the world's number one selling tractor. Region 6 Wardens Shane Reno and Wes Odekoven are saddling up for a saturation patrol on opening day of the bighorn sheep hunting season in the Missouri River Breaks. The operation includes ground, water, and aerial assets. Less than 1% of those applying will get a tag for this hunt. While scouting a location, Wes has reported finding a trail camera. So what Wes found was a, a trail camera on a tree next to a water tank underneath a tree stand. So it's a elk hunting situation where someone's got a tree stand hanging over a water hole where elk are watering. And it's not legal to use a trail camera uh, during the hunting season. Even though the focus of this saturation patrol is bighorn sheep, Opening day of the archery elk season overlaps and the wardens want to find out more. Oh, now let's go take a look. I'll follow, I'll follow you. See the sheep patrol has suddenly turned into a archery elk patrol. Possible illegal use of uh, cameras. Arriving on the scene, the first thing wardens find is a motorcycle with a license plate from America's 50th state. That's got to be a first for me, seeing a motorcycle from Hawaii. The motorcycle may or may not be part of the trail camera situation. The wardens decide to investigate further and zero in on the tree stand. Where's the camera at? Okay. Um, well, it is illegal to, to leave the camera up during hunting season while the season's actually going on. It is, huh? Yep. Okay. You didn't have any awareness of that? I anything? sure didn't, yeah. Okay. okay. All right, it's been in, yeah. actually in effect since uh, 1999, was it? Yeah. 99. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Regardless of when laws are enacted and what they specify, it's the responsibility of the individual to know the law so this hunter will receive a citation. Well, what kind of a citation is that? I mean, is that? Well, it's a misdemeanor citation, similar to running a stop sign. You know? yeah. The trail camera that was intended to gather elk scouting intel will be removed, and the hunter will have to get it back through the court system. I written here that I that I uh, took the one stealth cam and wrote down the serial number. Um, this is all your information up here. Down here, it's just just our code for the um, possession of the, of the uh, motion tracking device and using it. Right here I just wrote that it was unlawful possession of the motion, motion tracking device and that I observed you in the tree stand um, over top of that. Uh, any other questions on it? Nope. Okay. 
Montana hunters um, put through the legislation of Montana that they uh, did not want uh, um, trail cameras used um, for the purposes of scouting during the hunt season. 300 miles to the west in Region 4, Warden Brian Goley has come across some illegal off-road activity. What is he doing? Ooh, ooh. 414410. Okay. Well, if you want to come up to the bear teeth, I got a guy in a pickup way up on a mountain. I got me in route. Where do you need us? Well, it's on the way up. He's sitting on a hill, so. I don't know how he got where he's at, but it's not good. Yeah, that's a, a pretty good hike on foot. There ain't no roads up there. What is this kid doing? He's gonna try to run on us, I think. Whoop. I just shocked, I guess. This joyrider is driving on fragile ground in the Beartooth Wildlife Management Area, an area clearly marked off-roading prohibited. Warden Goley pulls him over while a BLM official backs him up on this stop. What are you doing? I just seen a trail and I was just following it. Okay, how many people you got in here? Yeah. Okay, shut your truck off. What are you doing climbing up on the hill? I was just... Take your seatbelt off, step outside. Is your truck in gear? Uh, no, it's in park. Put it, in, put it in park and come back here. Come over, stand right here. You know it's illegal to do what you're doing? Not. Okay, where are you from? Michigan. Hands on there. You got any guns on you or anything? You just driving around for the heck of it? Yes, okay. You got a driver's license? Okay. I mean, you're tearing your truck up, too. Okay, why don't you just stand there? Don't move. It turns out the individual has a friend with him just ahead in another truck, who also may be tearing up the hillside. Has he been climbing, too? No, that was the first That was the first I honestly didn't know that where I left. I seen a trail that's so I just figured that it was right. Okay, did you read any of the signs? Just a wildlife one. Yeah. Any of them that say what the I rules are here? No fireworks. Okay. Do you know whose land this is? I know. But you don't know, do you? So you just took a guess? Yes, sir. You, do you think that was smart? Yes, sir. I mean, you could be arrested for that. Well, here's the deal. I'm going to read you your rights. You understand that? Because this is a violation. So you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to an attorney and have him or her present with you while being questioned. Do you understand the rights I've just read you? You're watching Wardens only on Outdoor Channel. Warden Brian Goley has just witnessed a vehicle driving in a restricted area of the Beartooth Wildlife Management Area. He's pulled him over and read him his rights. Wardens are concerned about the damage to the WMA, but are also concerned about the potential of a vehicle starting a forest fire. So you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to an attorney and have him or her present with you while you're being questioned. Do you understand the rights I've just read you? Okay. I just can't believe that. 414, 410. Okay. Okay, we got him stopped here. There's two of them. I got the BLM guys with me. He's gonna check it out and see if the other truck was climbing too, but I got my main suspect here, so we're gonna talk it out, see what we need to do. This youngster is getting a solid dose of how law enforcement works on Montana's public lands. His carelessness and off-road driving not only damaged the terrain, but also endangered his passengers. 
So you're going to get a commission rule and rag violation, which is a basic violation of driving off established roads. And then you're going to get a disorderly conduct citation, okay? And that's for, uh, you know, creating a public nuisance or, or um, endangering the lives of people on the game range, which is you and your passenger. Okay, these are not criminal codes. They are misdemeanor fish and game codes, which means that you will not have a criminal history with anybody other than fish, wildlife, and parks. Do you have any questions for me? Okay. You're free to leave. Um, it is a constant problem that we have up here in the summer. Uh, people think that they can do what they want in these game ranges, and really, we, ver we, we try to protect them um, as much as we possibly can. 150 miles to the northwest in Region 1, Warden Nathan Reiner is patrolling on Flathead Lake. It's the 4th of July and Parks Warden Brian Schwartz is riding along with Warden Reiner and tonight their primary concern is public safety. They come across a boat operating without its lights on. We need some lights on. Excuse me? We need some lights with your dancing. Lights? Oh, lights. <laughs> okay. You do that for me? Hey, All right. right. Have a good night, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. We're just, just dancing, dancing along, yeah. Well, you can get some lights on for us? Lights on, please. I might hear you better now. Lights on? We need to have you put the lights on. Your light. Yep. Your white one on the back like this. You usually got to stick a, it's usually a pole like this. You got to put it in. Yeah. Oh, right. goes in that, it goes in that place right there. I'm not a boat guy, but I'm learning. All right. I got it right here. Okay. All right, you guys. Here. And which one of you is operating this boat? Right. Who Who's driving this boat? What? Who's driving the boat? So I'm, I'm wondering where does this go? Right here? Right there, yeah. Okay. You get a little closer to me. All right, now turn that that black part. You gotta you pull push the black part down. Great, sorry. No, we're not done with you yet. I think it's secure. No, put it down. The black piece. Okay. What? Switch, switch one of you is operating this. Who's driving the boat, ma'am? You're driving the boat. Yeah. Are you serious? Flathead Lake in northwestern Montana has seen its share of boating accidents in the recent years, most of them involving alcohol or just general carelessness. Warden Nathan Reiner and Parks Warden Brian Schwartz have come across a deadly mix of both. Which one of you is operating this? Who's driving the boat, ma'am? You're driving the boat? Are you serious? You're fine? How much have you had to drink today? You know, we actually, street, we just went one. to dinner over at oh, that's great. I thought the May. We just came out here. No, not the street. All right. where, 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 where's your street boat going at? Where's your boat? Pardon me? Where'd you put your boat in at? Right over here in the, um, 
So you live over here? Where, where do you where are you from? So you live? Do you have a place in the lake here? Yes. Right here. Yeah, I can tell you've had too much to drink. Cause it's just like driving a boat, just like driving a car. You can't drive when you're impaired. You understand that? Well, you, well, you know what? I, you know what? I'm not. I'm a. I can operate a raft real well, but not real diligent on a boat. But can do her. How long have you been sitting out here? I just got out here about 10, 15 minutes ago. Okay. And have you been drinking much out here at all? No. no we actually, we have not. No. So you haven't drank anything since you got out here? Nope. We haven't. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have her come in here so we can do some tests on her to see how she does. You know, we're out here to enjoy the fireworks. And we, you know, we weren't, I mean, if we were out here racing around. Oh, yeah. I understand that. You're not, you're being very cooperative and you haven't done anything except you didn't have your lights on. But, uh, but now that we're talking, I can't let you. I can't leave you. Well, and uh, if, you go, if you go out and wreck your boat, we're going to be liable for letting you go. And I understand that. So, so ma'am, I mean, you're not under arrest. Just need you to come in here so we can do some tests, do some tests in your eyes, and uh, see how much you had to drink to see, and see if you can drive. Well, and, and I'm, you know, I mean, if, if, if she can, I, I, you know, I'm not. I mean, I can do. Snow cash, motorcycles, whatever else. I, I okay. Just, I'm okay. But okay. you know what? I, I, mean, I can operate it. And, uh, All right. Well, yeah. I can have you give me a breath test, and if you're below the legal limit, then maybe we can let you do that. Excuse me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Whoa, whatever they want. Well, maybe I need, we need to check you too. You're the one that was driving. That's just to see if he can drive the boat back. I'm not driving the boat. But you said you drove it out here. 15 minutes ago is what you said. Right? Holy cow. Isn't that what you told me? That's not correct? Thank you. So, love for you. Here, stand right over here, would you? All right, can you take off your hat for me, please? Sure. Thank you. All right, do you, do you have hard contacts in? Yeah. Are they hard contacts or soft contacts? Soft. They're soft, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, you see the tip of the pin up here? Yep. Can you see that? Can you look at the tip of the pin for me? No. You can't see it or you can't look at it? No, I just won't. I can't. Why not? You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Can you see it? I'm not going to do that. Not going to do that? Mm -mm. Why is that? I'm fine. Well, let me see if you're fine. I am. Well, let me tell. Let me let me check your eyes. We'll tell if you're fine. Okay. All right. Okay. Here, how I flash that mark. All right. Look up here. Nope, follow the tip, see the tip of the pin? Why don't you just look at the tip of the pin, okay? Yeah. All right, now what I want you to do is follow it. Don't take your eyes off it, just follow okay. it. Ready? Here we go. Fine. Oh, keep going. No, I'm watching you. All right, we're still going here. Stay with me a little longer. I know how I am. Up here. Hi. All right, here. All right, I got a breath test. Okay. You're watching Wardens only on Outdoor Channel. Today, Region 2 Wardens sold seized antlers and other game at their annual auction, while Region 4 Warden Brian Goley found a joyrider on the Beartooth Game Range. 
Flathead Lake's 4th of July celebration finds an intoxicated boater looking at a possible DUI. Well, I got a breath test. The saturation patrol on the opening day of sheep hunting in the Missouri Breaks continues in Region 6. The task at hand gets increasingly difficult as the stakes are high for hunters on a once-in-a-lifetime trophy hunt. Critter doesn't have a chance if you got somebody in an airplane overhead flying around, keeping track of it, and then a, you know, walk a hunter. Wardens make sure their presence is known in an effort to preserve the resource and ensure hunter accountability. They pull out all the stops in their enforcement effort and fire up an aircraft to run an observation patrol. Will they find anything fishy going on below from their big eye in the sky? Three hundred miles to the west in Region Four near Holter Lake, Warden Brian Goley is in hot pursuit of a reckless driver. I mean, she just about hit these guys. She's got the real jump on me, too. She knew I was turning around, so she gassed it. You see her anywhere? Little Jeep, white Jeep. You see how fast I'm going? And she's gone. You see the, cop, the beer can just come out? Right there. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Scared me a little back there about run me over. I almost ran you over? Yeah. On the corner? Oh. Do you have a driver's license? Oh. Yes, I have a driver's license. Yeah, and then the other girl that you almost hit complained too. Oh, what? That was because we had a bee in the vehicle. All right. Yeah. swatting the bee out. All right, I just have to that make was... sure. I mean, you came not close to hitting me and her. Okay. No, we when have I a, turn around the we corner. We have a girl that's, that's uh, we don't have an EpiPen. Oh. And she is. Is she having a fit? Yeah. Okay. So we had Do you a, need to have medical? No. No, no she didn't she get stuck. We were getting it out. Oh. That's all we were okay. I thought you were in a hurry. Have you been drinking beer or anything? Uh, I'm not. I had one at the campsite. Did you drop a beer down here? Because I'm going to go get it. I saw right where it was. Did you drop a beer or not? Yeah, I did. Okay, step out and come back here. Okay, you can't be littering. And why did you I'll do that? That's fine. Have you ever been in trouble before? No, actually. No, All right. No. You, All can, right. you can run my idea. Where are you from? California. Okay. Well, we write tickets for littering, okay? I understand that. And I understand the B, but you guys almost wiped me out, okay? I and I'm not, I'm not harping on you because of the driving, but you didn't need to throw the beer can out. No, you're right, Brian. I, I apologize. All right. I'll go just, pick that up. Do you have an ID? Morning. Yeah, I do. I'll be picking the beer can up. You just hang tough. Are you a military guy or? Yeah, well, prior military, prior ranger. All right. So Arizona? Arizona, California, a little bit of everything. Okay. The initial stop is a traffic violation for erratic driving, which is outside of the warden's jurisdiction. They do, however, ticket for littering. Ma'am, you got to slow down yeah. on the corners. And I just don't think you were looking. I when... wasn't. I was just, it was just frantic. I know. <laughs> and if you'd have hit us and went off that, it would have been really bad yeah, for all of us, I okay? Understand. So just be really careful, all okay. right? So you'll get a warning for that, okay? okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, do you have $135? No, I do not. That's what it costs for littering. That's why I'm willing to go pick it up. Near Holter Lake in Region 4, Warden Brian Goley witnessed a passenger throw a beer can out of a vehicle that had just been stopped for driving erratically. I mean, you had, there's just no reason to throw that out. All right, well, I thought that's what was attracting the bees, so 
You're, you're right. I'm well, not the only reason you threw the beer can out is because I started to pull you over. Uh, actually, I used to be a cop, and I wouldn't. Be so you know. Yeah, I wouldn't be that dumb. So you used to be a cop, and you threw a beer can out, and you know the open container law in Montana. No, I'm like I said, I'm not from here, so All right. I'm not. Okay. Well, what is uh, this since you have me You here? cannot have an open container in your vehicle. <laughs> you can't just throw them out. Okay, and I understand that. Uh, and why don't you go up there and tell your daughter you're okay and that you're not going to jail or nothing. Could, oh. Is it your daughter in the middle? Yeah. That's I just don't want her to be upset because she got upset, okay? okay. Just tell her you're okay. Are you guys all residents of Montana then? Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Is she okay then? Yeah, she's fine. All right. Why don't you uh, come around here and get in the passenger seat of my truck, okay? Who bought the beer? Uh, backseat passenger. Uh, right do you have, and that's your daughter? Yeah. So you're just a single dad? Yes, I am. Her mom is in the military station at uh, Texas, retraining in Texas. Okay. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let you go. And I'm gonna check your record to make sure you have no fishing game crimes and no littering or anything like that on your record. I'm gonna give your ID back, you go back and get the cam. Understand? Free to go. See you later. Okay, have a good, safe holiday. Daniel! It was up a lot farther than that. Just on the edge. Don't hang around. If you don't find it, you don't find it. I'm just going to pick up everything I see on my way. Thanks, dude. See you later. Sorry about that, it's all right. It just happened, all right? See you later. Be careful. Yep. Picking up all the garbage. I'm good to go with that. One hundred fifty miles to the northwest in Region One on Flathead Lake, Warden Nathan Reiner is still dealing with an intoxicated boater. I'm not going to do it. You're not going to give a breath test? No. Okay. Um, we're going to give a breath test. We know you're okay to drive, else <laughs> I'm going to tow you back home. Uh, you know, um, we're no, fine. I, I don't think Seriously. I am. I mean, I mean ma'am, I can't let you go. It's either, it's either. I mean, you don't, yeah. have, any, you hey, don't have any cause to ask me for one, I don't think. I, well, because I am liable. If you drive and well, you I, crash into these people. I realize that, but so are all of these other people that are operating. And, in and, and sir, you're showing signs of impairment, too. Excuse me? You're showing signs well, of that's impairment, your, too. That's your opinion. Yeah. That is my opinion. You're correct. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So your choices are, one, I can give you a breath test to see if you, maybe you're plumb legal. Then we'll let you we'll let you drive. It's no problem. Or so, two, we, we we can just tow you home so you don't have to worry about it. Well, I mean that's fine too. You're watching Wardens only on Outdoor Channel. Bighorn sheep hunting at the Missouri River breaks can be one of the most challenging hunts in Montana. Privatization of public hunting grounds can put world-class bighorns in close proximity to grazing lands, which increases the spread of disease. Hunters often operate out of remote camps, which challenges wardens to be in command of the areas they patrol. This aerial operation helps wardens stay on top of the situation. Pilot Greg Tellman is joined by Warden Wes Odekoven. Their plane is a Piper Super Cub, a popular choice of bush pilot. It's great for slow speed observations and short takeoff and landing. They'll fly about three hours over a 50 mile stretch of the Missouri River. Wardens patrol this largely road-free area and get a read on hunter activity across the rugged breaks terrain, which drops over a thousand vertical feet at the river basin. The pilot and an observer in the back report to ground units details from high elevation passes and low canyons as they follow the terrain in the Super Cup. They can also monitor other air traffic that might be using aircraft to spot animals, which is illegal during the hunting season.
Fairly low. Yeah, we were gonna maybe hike up on top of this ridge. If there's a way you could fly down below us. With such a vast area, uh, what we're coming up with today is there hasn't been many hunters in areas where there traditionally been sheep. 400 miles to the west in Region 1, Warden Nathan Reiner is about to come to a conclusion to his two firecracker boaters. All right. All right um, Thank you. Yeah, here we go again. Another towing. I still love you. Where uh, where do you you go inside the harbor, the little harbor? No, that little. We you know that little tiny boat harbor. That, that goes all the way back in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let us know where uh, which which side of the which side of the harbor are you on, and how far back in there are you. Sure, I think I'm the one that towed you in two I years do. ago. Now well, we, uh, man, these folks just floating out in the water, uh, getting ready to watch fireworks and didn't have a light on and no validation decal and uh, um, obviously sh showing an impairment. Um, I didn't uh, see him driving or anything and then uh, I uh, did HGN and she couldn't follow the pin at all and so, uh, so I asked her to give a breath test. And, and uh, in Montana, there's no implied consent rule, uh, so they can refuse a test. And there's no recourse. So anyway, I guess it's her lucky day. I didn't see him driving. Um, we're just going to tow him back to shore, so we're not liable. And we're not out driving the boat around, killing anybody, and uh, we'll go from there. As they arrive back at the docks, this couple is grateful for the services of Montana Game Board. You know what? Seriously, dude, you're a good guy. And you can put that on camera. Put it on camera. Nathan, you know what? After we talk about the story all the time. Yeah, well, I. You know what we. We gotta cut back on the drinking a little bit in the boat. <laughs> Sure, I'm, I'm, I'm Gilligan now. Yeah, huh? Thanks for uh, yeah. thanks, getting, getting us back in here and being so patient. All right, guys. Hey, man, have, have, have awesome night. Stay, Stay put. put. Yeah. Yeah. We're hey, we'll do. We'll have to worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. You. All right, we'll try to see you again. Yeah, you try. Wardens is brought to you in part by Mahindra, the world's number one selling tractor. Back over in Region 6, it's opening day for bighorn sheep at the Missouri Breaks. Wes Odekoven is investigating what might be the first harvested bighorn this season. Is it a ram and of trophy quality? And is it true a teenage girl who is a first time bighorn hunter brought in the animal? On the opening day of the season, uh, we've just been told by a hunter that uh, there's been a ram harvested by a young lady in the hunting district. It would be the first ram of the hunting season in hunting district 680. I'm Wes Odeco, I'm the game warden in the area. Sweet. Um, yeah, I guess we'll get to plug a sheep, that's great. Yes, you will, that's it's great. coming. <laughs> oh, I just seen them on the flats. Okay. They're about halfway back. The hunters are on their way back with the head and cape. The meat has already been packed out and Wes needs to take a look. Are the meats up here in the shade? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, there is a tag. It looks like it's already tagged. Guess I could check that. So this tag is uh, Christina Rauschers and uh, she got the sheep earlier today. It's uh, dated here September 15th which is uh, 
opener of rifle season for General Sheep. Christina Rauscher and her dad Ryan are back in camp. While Christina is a very experienced hunter, this is her first attempt at a bighorn sheep. Christina put in for this hunt seven years before drawing this tag. Everyone in camp is curious and wardens waste no time measuring it up. What we're doing is we're, we're checking a bighorn sheep in for a hunter, young young lady who harvested her sheep around noon today. Uh, we're measuring the sheep to take all the proper measurements and putting those measurements down on a transportation permit which will log into the computer system to track the horn size and growth and match to the age of the sheep. Whoa! Wow. Really? 17 and 4. Wow! Holy smokes! Whopper. That's right in the top of the top masses. But... So just how old is this ram? Shane Reno counts the rings on the horns. Yeah, that goes seven and a half. This ram is a mature seven and a half year old. At 186 and a half inches, this ram exceeds the 180 minimum to make the Boone and Crockett record book. Christina stalked three hours and killed the animal at 213 yards with one shot from a bolt action Winchester 30 alt 6. We're also putting a pin in or a plug in the, one of the horns of the sheep. And we like to put them in there in a nice spot in a nice way. I want it on this side. You want the pin over here because you're going to want to put that side? Mm -hmm. That's how it's going. You have to be careful when you're putting the pin in to get the hole drilled squarely and uh, put the pin in and place it properly. So when you hammer it in, it goes in straight. Get it on my pocket. <laughs> there you go. Sheep is plugged. It's really neat to see a young lady and her dad have the opportunity to go out and have a hunt of a lifetime um, on an animal of a lifetime. The sheep that she killed today was a spectacular ram, was seven and a half years old, um, and just the, the prime, in the prime of his life, which is the time that we like to have him harvested. So it's really neat to see that, the relationship between the father and daughter, and that they're continuing the hunting heritage uh, that we have here in Montana and uh, to know that it is it's really neat to be able to keep that going. Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> this is it. This is it. Means more than the one you killed, I'll oh, bet. Oh, a lot more. <laughs> yeah. Cool. That had its own meat. Yeah. Yeah. 213. Really glad. The hunters just cringe when you actually drill the hole on the on the horn and stuff, but uh, and then when you go in to tap the actual plug into there, sometimes it can bend on, on you when you're tapping it in there if you don't get it going straight or if the hole's not big enough or anything. And, and then you gotta pull the plug out and, and uh, hunters just get worried when you're, when you're actually plugging it and stuff, but you get enough experience at it and everything, then yeah, um, it gets pretty easy after a while, actually.